think about what you and your friends normally do together. Maybe someone hosts a dinner or you catch a movie or go play a round of golf. But things don't always happen normally in the proudly weird city of Austin, Texas. That's where we found a group of close friends having a poetry party. I'm Sean Petrie and I type on a 1928 Remington Portable. I'm Jody Edgerton and I type on a 1970 Lytton Imperial. My name is David Fruchter and I type on a 1954 Royal Quiet Deluxe. And my name is Carrie Ann Holt and I type on my Oliver 1952 Portable typewriter. For these four friends, the incessant clatter of typewriter keys sounds like a great time together. They type and create and share one page improvisational poems under the name Typewriter Rodeo. And what subject do they have so much to write about? Well, that's where you come in. So you guys just do poems for whoever asks? Yeah, so like anyone who walks up and wants a poem, you just give us a word, a phrase, an idea. Anything you want a poem about, and we'll write you a poem. Give me a poem. You, well, okay. You give us a topic. So any topic you want. So you have to give us anything. The, the, the back roads of Texas. The no. back roads of Texas. I've been doing, traveling the back roads since I, I was a kid, yeah. So nice. doing stories about people. There nice. You know. All right. Is that enough? That is, that is plenty. <laughs> The typewriter rodeo has been wrangling words for several years now, and just like those ropers who can lasso a calf in a few seconds flat, these professionals make it look easy. But behind every one-page poem is a pile of advanced degrees, published books, and impressive talent. And now the, uh, the poem is yours. Uh, yeah, but will you read it for us? I will read you your poem, yes. The Back Roads of Texas. Oh, some folks want to get there fast. They measure the trip in cars they've passed. But oh, that's never quite been me. There's so much more than going A to B. Those winding roads, those country lanes, go as slow as you want. I won't complain. Yeah, you can go fast, drive like you're a big deal, but you'll find me on the back roads where life is real. Wow, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> there, that is your do, poem. You do, get to keep it. Do yeah. people sometimes feel like you've been like peeking into their souls? There's an anonymity to it that I think let, lets people share really personal stuff. And, uh, and yeah, and they do sometimes think, you know, have you been peeking in my windows? Like, how do you know this about me? We operate by intuition. I love it. Typewriter Rodeo travels the country setting up its schools, festivals, and bookstores. A line quickly forms everywhere they go. And most events are a non-stop printing press of personalized poems. They've tapped into something special. And Sean says that's because it's real. This is something that's so tangible. Can you get that, you know, to hold in their hands when they're done? I think that's pretty rare today. And the fact that the product of it is it's the only copy in the whole world of their poem. I think it actually helps with the creativity to know that, all right, I don't have time to think, whatever comes out, that's it. And that tends to be some of the best stuff and some of the most authentic stuff. Throughout the ages, famous poets sometimes have struggled over a word for days or weeks on end. You guys don't do that. We don't have time to do that. So, and our, our poems are not meant to be sort of these standalone masterpieces. They are poems that are capturing a moment and maybe a, a particular story or scene in someone's life, and they go with that. At the end of the day, after you've been writing these poems just you know, nonstop all day long, how do you feel? It's, it's funny because we'll finish a gig and we'll, we'll get in the car and we'll drive from it, and we're all just like, I did, I, I did, uh, like your words are just gone. Like <laughs> you used it all on the paper right there. But we're all super happy, but super tired at the same time. After years of typewriter rodeo events, they've written enough poems to fill a library, and so they published a book. It includes copies of not only some of their favorite poems, but the stories from each person who inspired them. The book is like a 
fraction, a tip, tip, tip of the iceberg of, of the poems that are out there. We, we figure we've written over 20, almost 25,000 poems um, total. See if you, if you recognize this one here. It's weird. I can put my hand right there on my chest and I can feel it. Feel that thrum and beat, feel it going and pumping like it's working, like everything in there is just a-okay. But hey, if you could take an x-ray of feelings, an MRI of emotion, yeah, if you could do that, you'd see the truth. A wrecking ball slamming again and again into this cracked and broken wasteland. But also, if you look, watch, and wait, you'd see that wrecking ball each time getting a tiny bit slower so that maybe someday this unseen pain will finally fade away. Tell me about that. Yeah, that was a poem that this woman, Katha was her name, and she came up and, and um, we were at a craft fair in Austin. And I remember her coming up to the table and uh, she just kind of leaned in and said, uh, I said, what can I write you a poem about? And she's like, my broken heart. And sometimes when I get a poem request or a topic, like I'll ask more, say, like, oh, tell me more about this or that. But I, in that moment, I knew like, well, there's nothing else to ask. There you go. Thank you, Thank you guys, that's so special. Sean, I don't believe for a second that you could have written this if you weren't hurting for that woman right then. But you didn't know her. No, I didn't know her, but a lot of us, especially when you get to be a certain age, have been through heartbreak, and so you can tap into that um, somewhat. And uh, yeah, I think what we do is, especially for poems like that, to try and share as much of ourselves as we can. Have you ever heard it said that someone has the soul of a poet? Well, if you want to know what that really means, then just look around for a little chalkboard sign that says, Free Poems. Listen to Sean, Jody, Carrie Ann, and David bang away on their vintage typewriters and feel, even for the briefest of moments, a real human connection from the typewriter rodeo. I think for us, the, the, the sharing, the human connection part is, is the most important part. When somebody comes up shares a bit of themselves um, with us and then trusts us to write them a poem about that. Um, that moment of human connection, I think, is the most important part of what we do and probably our favorite part. It's a huge honor just to think that these poems are out there.